Welcome. Let's understand basics of gas insulated transmission line. Due to the environmental constraints, GIL has become preferred alternative solution to overhead transmission lines. Nowadays, different options of underground transmission lines are available. The most common solution are cables, however, gas insulated lines are also applied as an alternative. GIL can be laid directly buried, in a tunnel, in a trench or on a structure as shown here in various pictures. GIL solutions offer different advantages, such as high current carrying capacity, low losses, low charging capacity etc. The first generation of GIL, filled with pure SF6 and consisting of flanged sections, and the second generation of GIL, filled with a gas mixture, SF6 and nitrogen, and comprising welded enclosures and conductors. GIL offers several advantages for high capacity power transmission, are low transmission losses, low capacitive load, power rating like an overhead line, high level of personnel safety, high reliability, no electric aging, low electromagnetic fields, no thermal aging. Now let's understand each advantage one by one. GIL has low transmission losses. Resistive losses are low because of the large cross section of the conductor and enclosure pipes. Typical GIL resistances are 6 to 8 milliohm per kilometers, depending on the outer diameter, 500 millimeters or 600 millimeters, and the wall thickness of the enclosure and conductor pipe, 6 millimeters to 15 millimeters. The transmission losses are related to the square of the transmitted current as P equals I square R, I equals current, R equals resistance. When the current rating is high, as it is for GIL, example 3150 ampere, then the effect of low transmission losses is high. The losses through the insulating gas are negligibly small. GIL has low capacitive load. Electric phase angle compensation is only needed at very long lengths, because the capacity of the GIL is low, typically 55 microfarad per kilometer. Therefore, no or low compensation coils, are needed under most network conditions, for transmission lengths of about 100 kilometers. This also reduces the thermal operation losses. GIL has power rating like an overhead line. The GIL is the ideal alternative, or supplement to overhead lines. The high power transmission capability of the GIL, up to 3000 MVA per system at 550 kV rated voltage, allows it to go directly underground in series with, an overhead line without power reduction. The GIL also allows the use of protection, and control systems in the same way as with overhead lines. No differential protection is needed, for failure location when a GIL is combined with overhead lines. The GIL has a low capacitance and, therefore, the inrush current is low. GIL has high level of personnel safety. The outer enclosure pipe is solid grounded, and no access to high voltage parts is possible, gas tight enclosure. Personnel safety is also guaranteed in case the GIL has to carry a short circuit current, 50, 63, or 80 kA, up to 1 second or 3 second. Even in case of internal failure, and an arc between the enclosure and conductor pipes, tests have shown that no external impact occurs on the surroundings. GIL has high reliability. The only purpose of the GIL is electric power transmission. No internal switching or braking capability is needed. Based on this, the GIL can be seen as a passive high voltage gas insulated system, with no active moving parts, example switches. Today, more than thousands of kilometers of single phase lengths, has been in operation worldwide for more than 45 years. So far, very rare failure have been observed, 
arc fault in the system. This makes the GIL the most reliable power transmission system known. GIL has no electric aging. Gas insulations do not age. The best example is an overhead line, with ambient air as insulating gas. The electric field strength of the insulators, and the maximum temperature of the GIL are too low, to start the process of electrical or thermal aging. This has been proven using long-term measurements in independent laboratories, and also by extensive experience with the equipment in the network. The first GIL installations have been in operation since 1974, and the results are reported by the SIGRA. GIL has low electromagnetic fields. To protect the public, and the operational personnel international regulations, require electromagnetic field limitations. These values vary across regions, and countries depending on laws, and regional regulations. A trend can be seen worldwide that limiting values, are getting lower and the restrictions harder. In densely populated areas, and cities these electromagnetic field requirements, are defining the allowed design of transmission lines. The GIL is operated as a solid grounded installation, and the inductive loop is closed through the ground connection. The coupling factor is about 95%. This means that the superposition of the two reverse currents, reduces the outside magnetic field by 95%, and only 5% of the magnetic field of the conductor current is effective outside the GIL. Because of the induction law, the current in the conductor will induce a current, in the enclosure of the same size and with 180 phase shift. The superposition of both electromagnetic fields is close to zero. In case of limitation of the magnetic field in the surroundings, this solid grounded GIL can fulfill even very low magnetic field requirements. With a current rating of 3150 ampere, within a few meters distance, a magnetic field strength of 1 microtesla, can be reached, as required in some countries. The advantage of a low magnetic field is important, when residential areas are close to the transmission line, for airports with their sensitive instruments, hospitals with their sensitive imagining systems, or all kinds of sensitive electronic equipment, in private, or business use. In Italy, electromagnetic field requirements for new installations, go down to magnetic flux values of only 0.2 microtesla. When residential areas are involved, the GIL can reach such low values over a distance of a few meters. GIL has no thermal aging. The GIL is designed for maximum operational temperatures, given by the surrounding conditions, maximum 60 or 70 degrees Celsius touching temperature in a tunnel, or 40 or 50 degrees Celsius, when directly buried. The different temperature values, depend on individual countries and their applied standards and regulations. In all cases the maximum allowed temperature, of the conductor of 100 to 120 degrees Celsius is not reached by far. Therefore, no practical aging of the system can be expected under these operating conditions. The GIL offers an opportunity to transmit large amounts of electrical energy, over long distances directly buried, underground or installed in a tunnel. In parallel with the GI's development, different GIL technologies have been developed. GIL jointed with O-ring ceilings and flanges, or jointed by weldings. With the different designs, different names were created, gas insulated bus duct, compressed gas insulated bus duct, bus bar, gas insulated transmission line, GITL, or gas insulated line, GIL. These names are in worldwide use today. In 1998 the International Standardization Organization IEC, introduced the name, Gas Insulated Transmission Line, with abbreviation GIL as the preferred term for use worldwide. The preferred name GIL is for any gas insulated system, using atmospheric pressure or overpressure inside, which has no switching or braking function and is longer than 500 meter. This is the actual definition of IEC for GIL. 
The GIL used inside substations, and in conjunction with GIs is jointed by flanges and the sealing for gas tightness is made by O-rings, the same technology as in GIs. When used as power transmission lines in tunnels, above ground, or directly buried the joints are welded. There are different types of enclosure, and conductor pipes used. In AC they are made of aluminium, or aluminium alloys. The pipe may be made from aluminium plates, sheet material or raw material for the extruding process. The gas insulated system of the GIL is made of support insulators, gas tight insulators, conductor and enclosure aluminium pipes, and the insulating gas. The cost aspect gives another view on the insulating gas. SF6 is much more expensive than nitrogen. It offers two advantages over nitrogen, high arc extinction capability, and higher insulation capability. The high arc extinction capability of SF6 is not needed in GIL because there is no switching function. The higher insulating capability of SF6 can be partly compensated for nitrogen or SF6 gas mixtures by increasing the pressure. This would mean that a nitrogen or SF6 gas mixture GIL could be more cost effective. The insulating mechanism in a GIL is, therefore, similar to an overhead line where the air around the line acts as gas insulation. A GIL is like an overhead line inside an enclosure. SF6 has a three times higher electrical insulation capability than air when the same gas pressure is applied. Two different types of assembly are in parallel use. The flange GIL and the welded GIL. The flange GIL uses flanges and bolts with ceilings to connect the single sections of the transmission line. The welded GIL uses orbital welding to connect these sections. Insulators in GIL. The conductor needs to be held in the center of the enclosure so that the electric field distributes equally in the concentric pipe system. Insulators are typically made of epoxy resins, with filler material. There are two types of filler used today, silicium and aluminium oxide. The requirements for the various formulas come from features such as mechanical strength, maximum allowed temperature, electric insulation behavior, surface discharge sensitivity, and surface tracking with standability. For applications in GIL, the maximal temperature and the discharge tracking with standability are the prime features where mechanical strength and electric insulation are of minor importance. The mechanical strength for insulators in gas insulated switch gear is higher, where besides the gas pressure, strong shock forces from the operation of circuit breakers and switches also need to be covered. There are three types of insulator in use today. Post type insulators with one, two, or three legs holding the conductor in the center of the enclosure. Conical insulators, which are concentric around the conductor with holes and fix the conductor towards the enclosure. Gas tight conical insulators, which are concentric around the conductor and enclosure without holes to separate the gas compartments and to fix the conductor towards the enclosure. They are part of the pressurized enclosure of the GIL. Why is gas tightness so important for GIL? There are two reasons for the high gas tightness of GIL. First, there should be no loss of gas in the system, because it is needed to keep the insulation of the high voltage, and to stay in operation. Second, if there is no gas loss, then there is also no impact from the environment, to the high voltage system inside. If nothing is coming out, nothing will go in. Besides dust and all kinds of particles, the low-level moisture is important for the high-voltage insulation. Insulating gases need dew points of minus 20 degrees Celsius and below at atmospheric pressure. This gas tightness is reached with O-ring ceilings and welded joints. On-site welding is tested 100% by ultrasonic weld control, which proves the gas tightness. Let's see quick facts about GIL. The enclosure material is sheet aluminium or extruded aluminium. To increase the mechanical stability aluminium alloys are used. The capacitance of the GIL 
is about two to three times higher than an overhead line, and about four to five times smaller than a solid insulated XLPE cable. Insulating gas, the insulating gases used in GILRSF6 and N2. These gases are stable and can be used up to 500 degrees Celsius. So, there is no practical limitation on the GIL from the insulating gases. Insulators, the insulators are made of cast epoxy. There are different types of cast epoxies used, depending on the manufacturers. The maximum temperatures of these cast epoxy insulators are, between 110 degree Celsius and 125 degree Celsius. These values are related to the insulator materials and are standardized in IEC 62271-204, or IEEE C37.122. Sliding contacts, sliding contacts are usually silver-plated and are used to compensate the thermal expansion of the conductor. The temperature limits of such contacts are limited to 105 degrees Celsius. This value is a standardized value from IEC 62271-204, or IEEE C37.122. These are the various standards and references, which is being followed for GIL. IEC 62271-204, High Voltage Switch Gear and Control Gear, Part 204. Rigid gas insulated transmission lines for rated voltage above 52 kV. IEC 62271 to 1 High Voltage Switch Gear and Control Gear, Part 1, Common Specifications for Alternating Current Switch Gear and Control Gear. IEEE 1677, GIL Application Guide. SIGRA TB260, N2, and SF6 Mixtures for Gas Insulated Systems. SIGRA TB218, Gas Insulated Transmission Lines. SIGRA TB351, Application of Long High Capacity Gas Insulated Lines. Regulations are released by authorities and vary from country to country. Thank you for your attention and time. More stuff coming soon. Don't forget to subscribe.